Welcome to the special feature, Smart Water for Smart Cities on ET Now. Water is widely considered to be a waning resource. And in this feature, we'll explore how smart cities across the country are approaching the predicament and which solutions in particular have surfaced to the top. Nitin Tappe has been living in Baner since 2004. A residential and commercial hub of Pune. Baner is growing and growing fast. Little did Nitin and his family know that one day inadequate water supply will affect their lives so much. Due to the uh, very inadequate supply of water, uh, you know, the first thing is that gets restricted only for the drinking purpose. And, uh, you know, what really it leads to, it leads to the fact that there is no other water available for the utility purpose. Uh, to a point where in our society, we have to enforce people that they cannot storage a water which is being supplied. Uh, they have to really use it only for a drinking purpose and they cannot really store it for other purpose. Quality of water is not so good. Actually, you know, uh, we get drinking water also in yellowish color, so it has mud and all that things. So we have to use uh, RO for our uh, drinking water, RO filter. The inadequate supply of water in the area has led to high dependency on groundwater. And the maintenance cost of these pipelines is burning a hole in the common man's pocket. Borewell water uh, is very hard. The tedious value, if you measure, uh, reaches up to 600, and that leads to various other problems. More importantly, uh, it also has eroded and corroded all our pi internal pipeline. The pipelines which are supposed to last for 20, 25 years easily, uh, we as a society, we really need to replace all these pipelines in 10 to 12 years itself, which is a huge financial burden for us. But there is always hope. Residents like the Tapes are expecting the situation to improve in the near future. Absolutely. I think when Pune is getting really nominated for a smart city, uh, water being the basic necessity, I think anyone expecting the water to be supplied 24 by 7 uh, and that to pressurize water uh, is, I think, is a very basic, basic necessity. जावे हां 16 17 वर्ष झाले आलोच हित की आम्हाला जास्त काम भेटावा म्हणून असं चांगलं होवा म्हणून आम्ही कामासाठी आलेलो आहेत आम्हाला थोडं जास्त पाणी मिळायला हवं असं सगळं मनीषा हु लिव्स इन पुणेस बालेवाडी एरिया रिसीव्स बेरली 4 आवर्स ऑफ वॉटर सप्लाय इन अ डे पाणी आम्हाला संध्याकाळी 8 वाजता येतो परत मग सकाळी जातो लवकर पाणी परत कपडे बिपडे धुयचे म्हणले की मग संध्याकाळी आम्हाला उशीर होतो कपडे धुवायला मग सकाळी पाणी आलं म्हणजे सगळं व्यवस्थित होत ना द इनएडिक्युएट वॉटर सप्लाय हॅज मेड लाईफ डिफिकल्ट फॉर हर फॅमिली इवन कंप्लीटिंग डेली चोर्स हॅज बिकम अ चॅलेंज फॉर मनीषा पाणी उशीर आल्यामुळं आवरायला बी हे होत टाईम भेटत नाही काय नाही म्हणजे पाणी असं येळेवर आलं पाहिजे आम्हाला आम्ही मोठ्या शहरामध्ये मोठं व्हायसाठी आलेलो तर आमच्या गरजा नाही होणार तर आम्ही कसं मोठं होणार बट द सिच्युएशन विल नॉट बी सो ग्रिम इन द टाइम्स टू कम Thanks to the smart metering and other water related initiatives by Pune Municipal Corporation on the Smart City program. Well, that's a glimpse of the current challenges facing Pune with respect to water supply. But now I'd like to bring another perspective into the conversation, and I'm joined by the Managing Director of Vishwaraj Infrastructure, Arun Lakhani. So, so let's talk about the current scenario. How severe is the water crisis facing urban India today, in your view? We are uh, almost on the point of uh, being calling it severe, because uh, we we have almost a 60 years backlog about water management and investment into water management. Although we have invested in many, many programs, but to maintain it, we have not given adequate budget all through. So today, the situation is we have towns where average water supply time is one to six hours. We have hardly 4% meterization leading to irresponsible uses of water. 
and uh, we also have a hardly 65 percent coverage of pipe water and because of the intermittent water it is also not a healthy water to our citizens. Well sir we know that the problems are of course multifold. The government is heavily endorsing the Swachh Bharat campaign but what's your view as far as the on-ground reality with respect to sanitation and sewage treatment in this country? Today on the sewage front if you see we are pumping 38,000 million liter per day untreated sewage into nature. The A class cities have only 30 percent capacity installed. Our smaller towns have only 3 percent capacity installed. So this has led to a situation of uh, that our 21 percent of our diseases are waterborne. Like UNICEF says, if you invest 1 rupee into water, you save 8 rupees in the health budget. So that is I think more severe situation than the drinking water. So the government of India has the infrastructural framework in place to launch a hundred smart cities across the country. But rapid urbanization of course puts a toll on resources. So that said, can these cities become or be called smart from a water perspective? I think uh, let's uh, appreciate the, 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 the intent to make cities smart. Uh, it's a long way, definitely. I mean, we, we will need time and resources to reach there. But to think that we want it to be at that level itself is a very good beginning. And water and sanitation are on the top priority of the government into the smart city program. And luckily, you know, the good part is that out of these 105 smart cities, uh, smart towns, 94 of them have adequate water. We have 135 liter per day per person as the international norm of having water. So in this, uh, with a simple math of population and the water being supplied to these towns, we have more than 135 LPCD. Well, if the issue is not water supply, is it mismanagement of the distribution network? I think it is missing management. It's not a mismanagement because we have never really tried to manage it properly. We have uh, invested, like I said, into assets, but uh, our budgets for maintenance are very inadequate over all these decades. Resulting in that, we have 50% of water as non-revenue water over 50%. We don't know where it is going. We treat it and put it into system and it never reaches the consumer. So we need to invest. So we, this, this negative cycle need to be broken because we need to invest into, into the uh, infrastructure so that we reduce this, uh, you know, almost 30 to 40% water we can easily save. In light of all this, Orange City Water has introduced some groundbreaking water initiatives. What are they and what are they intended to achieve? The Orange City Water, um, uh, which is a joint venture of Vishwaraj Environment and Veolia France, uh, the basic intent is to provide 24 by 7, 24 hours pressurized water, healthy water to the citizens of Nagpur. This is the first of its kind full city program. It's a 27 lakh uh, population town. We have uh, over 350,000 consumers there and uh, we will be replacing 600 kilometers of pipeline. Then the second thing is that uh, this program is so inclusive that it provides for a tap to every household irrespective of, you know, it's a Joggi, it's a Bangalore, it's a flat scheme. All the asset ownerships remain with the corporation at all the times and all the sovereign rights of connection, disconnection and tariff setting are with the elected body. So we get paid for a, a fee for the cubic meter of water we supply, bill and collect for. So there is a complete alignment of interest of the corporation and of the private operator. This is a, a good structure and that's why now we are in the fifth year and it is uh, in, the, in the first two years we could achieve the equitable water distribution. So in the last uh, two years, if you see Nagpur, you will not see Morchas and you will not see the beads for, you know, chasing the tankers. Now, area by area, we are converting it to 24 by 7. Well, any sort of social infrastructural change requires heavy community support and participation. Has educating the end customer on this model posed a challenge at all? See, uh, community or society, they always welcome something which is good for them. The important thing is to communicate, you know, there are very valid uh, apprehensions in anybody's mind when they see a particular facility and uh, something like water getting shifted from government to say sort of a private, public-private partnership model. 
so we in invested heavily into the communication we spoke to more than 50000 school children right from beginning from there about my city my water program to all the forums of the all the interest groups of the society see the water projects are essentially social projects they are not technical or not commercial projects so unless we have these people onboarded and as we call it as a 4p model that p people as government p private and another p p as citizens unless we have them onboarded these programs these uh, contracts of 30 years will not last and this i am saying not because you know something to you know to good to have this is essential because in 25 years you will be crossing four to five regime changes so people if they are onboarded they are with you and they understand that this is in their benefit you have a, a very large security and ease of operations ease of working in any community it's time for a short break we're in conversation with arun lakhani managing director of vishwaraj infrastructure don't go anywhere Welcome back to Smart Water for Smart Cities. We're in conversation with Arun Lakhani, Managing Director of Vishwaraj Infrastructure. Sir, I want to switch gears. So you have another initiative in place, which is the Wastewater Treatment with Reuse Initiative. Walk us through it and how it's structured. Any town, we supply water of say 100 units, 80 units comes back as sewage. Now, this sewage in the current scenario goes, you know, like uh, untreated, and contaminates all our fresh water sources. Now, we are supposed to treat this, you know, it's mandatory for us to treat this. But for an urban local body, like I said, in this three-tier system, with their tax regime and their resources, the priority for this goes quite low. Because they have, say, they have to s supply drinking water, electricity, cleanliness, roads, etc., etc. So, neither OPEX nor CAPEX required for these type of projects is available with them. The government of India has come out with different schemes like Jain URM, now Amrut, which is supporting these initiatives. In Nagpur, uh, there is a different initiative taken by the municipal corporation. They floated a, a bid for 100% privately funded sewage treatment plant on an annuity basis. The rights of selling the treated water to nearby industry were given to the operator. So, we are investing into this 200 million liter per day sewage treatment plant, Vishwaraj uh, infrastructure, 100 percent. There is no grant, no support from government. Fortunately for us, we have thermal power stations around the town and NTPC has agreed, you know, to consider it to buy this. It is in the process to uh, buy the treated water. Now, look what happens once you have, they buy this 150 million liter per day of water their reservation of 150 million liter with the the pinch reservoir will get transferred to the town now town getting 150 million liter per day translates into water for almost 11 lakh people more secondly you know the contamination which this sewage was doing to that same lake gosikhud the same reservoir is will now get stopped so there are like multiple bottom lines here Government of India, I must, you know, congratulate them, have come out with a uh, actual, you know, cabinet decision that within 50 kilometers of their power stations, state or central, if the treated water is available, it will be given priority, it should be given priority. This and the regulator have also agreed to pass on the additional cost to the, in the tariff. These type of initiatives, like they support uh, environment, they support Swachh Bharat. So, so many programs, you know, they will generate employment and they will have water. And how are private investors and utility operators incentivized to participate in this model? See, private uh, investor and utility operators fundamentally require good, robust revenue security. So, that's the key. So, like for us in this particular project where we are investing close to 300 crore rupees and we will add another 300 crore for the tertiary treatment and the pipeline. The rating of the municipal corporation is very good. 
they have given us an annuity uh, support. So, the project basically envisages that if nothing happens, they will we will be paid in 15 years. But if we sell water, there is a sharing arrangement between corporation and us, which will have this plant free of cost for the corporation, including operation and maintenance of 30 years and some upside for the private investor. So, these type of models where there is a basic revenue security, there is a possibility of upside which will is connected to so many benefits to the society, to the corporation, to everyone. These 105 towns and if we want to take them to 24 by 7, the investments are like 38,000 crores are required out of which uh, obviously 60 percent come, can come from the private because of the hybrid annuity model which is being quite uh, you know acceptable to the to the industry as well as banks similarly for the sewage treatment there is 8 to 10000 million liter per day of capacity that can be treated leading to a 20 22000 crore of investment so these are attractive investments for private investors and th some of these major chunk will be part of the ganga program and so it's become an economically viable business model essentially from the utility point of view, yes, definitely, it's a, it's, a, it's a good model. From the power corporation point of view, now that the regulators are allowing them to pass it on to the, the, in the tariff, so it is same for them. From the people point of view, they are getting the contamination out and they are getting additional water. When you talk about other cities and smart cities and their approach to smart water, what aspects of their approach do you consider to be on the right path? Can you share some examples? Nagpur 24 by 7 uh, has been a path breaking uh, you know model. Uh, we were uh, given the best practice uh, recognition by Prime Minister at the launch of Amrut where it was presented to 500 mayors and commissioners. So a lot of interest has come from them and they have they come to Nagpur and uh, to see the model. Some of the towns, uh, some of the states like Karnataka, they have done it uh, with for their semi-urban and rural towns as well. So, we ourselves are doing five towns in Karnataka. Pimpri Chinchwad is recently we have started doing. Ahmedabad, um, Kol Kolkata, Delhi, they have, they are in the process of building up the model, the, the bids for this 24 by 7. Now, Pune is doing a very good job in going for smart metering and, uh, you know, addressing the, the basic problems of uh, accountability, the responsible use of water in a big way. So, that will add to their uh, uh, revenue as well. I wanted your thoughts on the Clean Ganga campaign and whether you see an overlap between that and what smart cities are doing to equip themselves with smart water. You see, uh, there is a definite overlap. The Ganga basin, you know, the Ganga stem and the, the rivers flowing into Ganga have 177 towns, so urban towns. So, Swachh Bharat, Amrut, all these programs automatically gets integrated with the Namami Gange program. And what's it like to enhance the lives of so many by providing a basic but essential amenity like water? It's wonderful. Actually, when you go there and uh, see, meet people and you listen to them and see their lives changing in a dramatic way, it's, uh, it's really wonderful, you know, like it is something that I always wanted to do and uh, it's uh, quite fulfilling. I will also share one interesting, uh, you know, uh, fact that from the these areas of low income group, Chuggis, 85 percent recovery is coming without follow up. We were surprised, we asked people. So, they said because now they are saving time, half a day, one day, which they were wasting on the collecting water. So, they are making, you know, earning much more than what they used to. And so, they do not mind paying for water. Sir, thank you so much for your time and your insights. We wish you continued success. Thank you. Now that you've seen what we do, let's see what the international experts have to say about this concept. Smart city program, uh, there is the word smart in it. But when we talk about water, the first condition to be able to bring this smart uh, adjective is to provide a service. And so that's why 24 by 7 is the first condition before we can think of smart.